Today, we're going to learn English with a real story about things that smell and answer the question, can using perfumes be different in different cultures? Let's find out while you learn vocabulary in the best way possible by listening to a real story. Welcome to English Coach 3 T's. The story I have for you today is about a janitor that I came across back in 2000. But before we get into that story, let's talk about some of the words and phrases you might want to use with these things that have smell. So this is a scented candle. And I don't have a lot of scented candles, meaning they have a smell, a scent around my house because I know that sometimes the scent, especially if it's a chemical of scent, can aggravate some people's senses. But this happens to be one of my very favorite scented candles. And the story around this is that I smelled this candle while I was out shopping with my girls. And it kind of became a family tradition for one of them to give me this candle as a gift at Christmas. Now it's one of the special things in my life and it brings back a lot of fond memories. When we're talking about a scent that you might put on your body, we will probably call it a perfume or a cologne. Now there are some specific distinctions about these two words, but for the sake of conversation, you just need to know that we typically call something like this for a woman, perfume, and if it's for a man, we say cologne. However, like I said, sometimes those words will change, especially when you're buying one of these scents. Another thing that has a scent is an essential oil. This one is patchouli. Patchouli is one of my favorite scents. And I like to put it in a diffuser so that I can smell the scent everywhere in the room. And because it is a natural oil, it doesn't tend to aggravate the senses of as many people. Do you have a favorite scent that you like to wear or use in your home? In 2000, I was pregnant with my daughter, Talia, who is my second daughter. And at the time, I had to go into the hospital for quite a long time and ended up in the ICU. The ICU is the intensive care unit where people go when they have very serious medical issues. And at the time, I was pregnant and having difficulty breathing. I had heard that sometimes people have sensitivity to different things that have scents like candles, perfumes, even hairspray, shampoos, and anything that has a chemical scent. I was willing to believe that it was possibly true, but to be honest with you, I kind of thought it was just people being picky. Then while I was in the hospital, I was in my hospital bed and a janitor came in to empty the trash. While he was in the room, I noticed that I was having a very, very difficult time breathing. Like I said, I was in the hospital because I was having a difficult time breathing, but while he was in the room, it was almost like I couldn't breathe at all. I pushed the button you used to call the nurse and said that there was some sort of scent that was really making it difficult for me to breathe. She noticed that the janitor had on a heavy cologne that was making it very difficult for me to breathe. Did you know that I'm giving a free class for busy women who have an intermediate to advanced level of English? It's called Three Secrets to Becoming Fluent without wasting time, and without doing things that don't work. If you'd like to join, go to the link you see on your screen or click on the link in the description below. Needless to say, after having this experience, I realized that yes, in fact, 
if this could happen to me, it could happen to different people who have different medical issues or possibly allergies. Since that time, I've stopped using so many artificial scents or chemical scents because I've also learned they're not really great for our breathing in general, even when we're healthy. If you like learning vocabulary with stories like this one, be sure to give us a thumbs up, save this video so you can practice, and share it with a friend who wants to be fluent in English. Let's talk a little bit about the question about whether or not wearing a perfume can be different in different cultures. I was unaware that this was different in the United States than it is in other countries until I was talking with one of the students in our She Speaks Fluency program for women. She was telling us that in her native country, women and men wear perfume whenever they want and think nothing of it. Now, there are people, of course, in the United States who do that, but more and more there are people who understand that wearing a certain perfume or, like I said, a hairspray or a shampoo can cause problems for someone else's breathing. And so it's starting to be considered almost rude to wear a lot of perfume or cologne or anything else that has a lot of scent. What is it like in your country? Is there any cultural norm surrounding whether or not you wear perfume? I'm curious and I always love to learn these kinds of things. Now that you've learned a few words and phrases, you're gonna want to remember them and start using them in conversation. That's why I made this video so that you can learn how you can remember these words more effectively. And if you've already seen that one, it's time to learn some new words and phrases in this video. I'll see you there.